Welcome again to That's My Dad. This is Scott Hilton. We've got an old buddy, Jamie Strange, yeah. here. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming in, Jamie. You had to hey. drive a long way to get here. Well, yeah, that's not, you know, I, my old stomping grounds, I guess. It's yeah. a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you having me. Good to see you. Jamie's uh, an FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's your job title? I, I guess area director. Area, you know, area uh, director. cover a five county area in northeast Alabama. Yeah, but yeah. more importantly, he's he's a husband, mm-hmm. twenty six years to right. Rebecca, and three kids. Right. So great guy. Thanks for coming in. You know, Jamie, you came out of a situation in terms of your family that's a little different. So let's talk about that. It was a divorce situation, and right. I feel like there are a lot of kids out there that can relate to what you went through kind of tell us about that yeah it was uh you know if there was a a good divorce as far as how your parents handled it my, my parents did a pretty good job at it you know yeah. th- you know trying to help me and my brother I was six my brother was nine and um you know we didn't really know what was going on other than my mom was moving to another place and yeah. uh and they arranged all the you're gonna stay with your dad this this week and me mm-hmm. this week and um, you know, it, it, and they weren't, uh, you know, it wasn't a hostile environment. They, they, they were, you know, cordial and, and, uh, and did the best they could for a bad situation. Yeah. But, uh, so basically from six, six on, you know, I, I, you know, parents were divorced and, you know, I, I knew, uh, uh, how much time I spent with my dad, how much time I spent with my mom. I didn't choose, uh, they chose mm-hmm. for us. And so, yeah. you know, all in all, you know, it, it was, it was hard to look back and say, I, I, I thought maybe this is normal, honestly, you know, yeah. as a little kid. I mean, I yeah. guess this is just what happens. But uh, as you get a little older, you kind of figure things out a little bit more. But, yeah, I did grow up in that environment. Though. What, what do you think that your parents did in that unfortunate situation for the sake of somebody who might be going through that? How, what did they do right in terms of parenting you through it, that? Through that? I, you know, like I said, I, I think they, they kept us out of it. And we were, you know, really – my brother was maybe at an age where he was getting into – you know, a uh, little bit older and, and, uh, but I was really young and, um, you know, I think they just, again, they, they, they maintained in front of us, you know, a respectful relationship and they really didn't have a bad relationship. Honestly, they just, uh, parted ways. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I look back on it and, uh, I, I, you know, I hate, hate that they went through that. And, and even now I'm, I'm 50, they're, they're both alive even to this day, you can still see some of the effects of it just because, you know, I, mm-hmm. they live like 10 miles apart. But, I, you know, when we go home at Christmas, you know, or yeah. a holiday, who, who do I go see? i got to make that decision now. Yeah. But uh, It complicates a lot of it, stuff. It complicates a lot. You know, uh, big events in life. My son's getting married uh, in a few months. You know, you know, who stays here? Who, you know, who does what? You know, yeah. but, uh, but as a child, they, they, did, they did well, you know, uh, getting us through that time. And uh, saw them both remarry. Uh, saw my dad uh, remarry twice. Uh, so uh, uh, you know, had two stepmoms, and uh, my dad's been married now for like three years longer than I have. Okay. And uh, and then uh, my mom and and stepfather been married for over forty years. I mean, they they got okay. married, you know, when I was maybe eight. But you ended up having a great stepdad as well, I believe. You. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, my again, my when my mom and stepdad married, they 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 weren't following God, um, but they uh, got married, and and my stepfather really had a uh, you know a, a, an amazing life change. He was in his early forties. I was probably eleven or twelve, and uh, long story short, you know, uh, he. Uh, Ask God one night if you're real, show me, you know. Uh, and uh, he got a call. He had a daughter in college back in the, the, the mid late 60s. At that time, abortion was not legal. So uh, his girlfriend at the time, they she went away to a, a home in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, where you could go through the process of having a child, and they put him up for adoption. And... Uh, and so uh, that's what happened to his daughter. He never met her. Yeah, mm. They went, went away to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and uh, a judge there adopted her. And when he prayed this prayer that night, you know, God, if you're real, show me. And the next morning, this judge calls him, and he says, do you remember having a, a daughter? He said, yes, sir, I do. I said, well, she's 19 years old, and um, she would love to talk with you. Really? If you're open to that. 
And yeah. he's like, yes, I, I had never seen her, never seen her, never saw her as an infant, never saw her born. And, um, he got on the phone, talked to her. They arranged the time to meet. He hung the phone up and got on his knees and said, I surrender, you know, and I saw that happen in this man's life, uh, a 180. Uh, I would say he would be a, what would be called an alcoholic. He drank every night and, um, uh, and, uh, sometimes drank himself, you know, uh, into a mess. And, uh, over time, just uh, literally gave up alcohol and uh, started doing devotions like my grandfather did. You know, mm-hmm. in our home, we for dinner we we'd have a little devotional time and wow. got us in church. And that's when I really started getting involved in, in church. And so your stepdad had a huge impact on you. Oh yes, definitely. Your as well as but but all oh you, both yes both parents. Uh, how has how has their influence on you affected you as a parent? Well, you know, definitely uh, I've got three boys, so I'm raising three boys, 22, 20, and then 14. Um, that's something that I, uh, you know, taken from both of them, I guess you'd say you've kind of merged those two together, and that's, well, one thing I do know this, um, my dad, my, my biological dad and my stepdad, um, whether they knew it or not, they discipled me. You know, you know, they, you know, when I hear the word disciple, uh, it's a follower and, uh, and I, by ch- not my choice, I had to follow them, you know, mm-hmm. uh, they were my father and, uh, stepfather and, you know, how they functioned, how they operated, uh, you know, I, I had, I, I find myself doing some of the good and some of the bad, even to this day, you know, passed so, on. Oh, just passed on, passed you know? on. Yeah. yeah, I just, they just, I just saw it happen and, and so, one thing for me in parenting, I've realized that my three boys, if I'm, if I'm going to end of my life, sit there and say, who did I influence? Who did I impact in my life? I know three boys for sure. Hmm. Uh, I've impacted and will impact as long as I'm alive, good or bad, you know. What do you have to do? What do you have to do to be a great father? Well, I, I you know, I, I don't know. I, I'd like to find out. <laughs> uh, What's your best guess? <laughs> my, my best guess is to be conscientious of you are follow, that you are discipling them, whether you know it or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, how can I be intentional with that? Um, you know, uh, with FCA, we teach a character class. Uh, it's called Habitudes. A guy named Dr. Tim Elmore. He was with John Maxwell. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and, and this character class that we teach has different subjects. And one of those is called, uh, and it's an image uh, they show a picture. One of them was called life sentence and it has a tombstone and it has a, you know, uh, uh, some words underneath the tombstone to describe in a sentence or a few mm-hmm. words, the person who's buried there. And, um, and, and, and the, basically the lesson goes that you have a life sentence, you know, um, uh, with, with people that yeah. you talk to. Uh, and, uh, what does it say? You know, I look back and I, I lived, you know, here in the, uh, Anderson Gadsden area for seven years. I have a sentence here with people, uh, went to college in Virginia, uh, have a sentence there with college classmates, uh, worked as a youth pastor in Tennessee and in Florida, I have a sentence with them. So I, you know, what does my sentence say? What is that word that mm-hmm. describes me or those words that describe me? And, uh, I think about that as a parent, you know, when I'm not here anymore, you know, what is my kid, what, what are they going to say about me? Are they going to say yeah. he was a funny man? Are they going to say he was fun to be around? Are they going to say, <laughs> you know, uh, he was a good guy. He worked hard. He loved his job. He was a great minister. You know, I, I, I don't want those words and that they may be flattering to some, but I, I really want them to be able to say, uh, he, 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 he followed Christ. Mm. You know, so you got to be intentional about that. You got to be intentional. Well, because you know they have seen and it, they've seen my failures, they've seen yeah. my mistakes, and I know they have. I know they've seen how uh, you know my job sometimes has taken precedence over them. Yeah, t- tell me what mistakes do you feel like you've made as a dad? Well, I think for sure I've been in full time uh, ministry my entire career, twenty seven years, and I've worked in churches. Um, the, I, I made the transition to FCA. I, my 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 little son, he was four at the time. I uh, remember the year before we made this transition. I remember um, 
you know, my son not eating dinner. I came home to eat dinner, and he wasn't eating dinner. And uh, and uh, like, hey, come on, you got to eat. You know, why don't you want to eat dinner? Because when I finish eating dinner, dad leaves. Oh. You know, uh, and I, you know, hey, I was out doing ministry. I mean, I'm I'm serving people. I'm I'm giving my life and sacrificing my life uh, to serve. But what what does that mean? I mean, you know, I, as a parent, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I you know, I'm glad they saw that a guy that cares about somebody and serves and sacrifices. But do they know that they were my priority? You know, and uh, and I and I and I still you know struggle with that. We gets busy in ministry sometimes. Mm-hmm. And what am I showing to them as far as how I treat their mom and how? Uh, I put make her a priority. I pursue her and 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 find and 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 intentional about finding time with her and serving her. Or do I get so uh, in, important in my mind to to other things? You know, mm-hmm. uh, if there's anything I've served in four ministry areas in my life, and if there's anything I've learned, is everywhere I've left, they've made it without me. Okay. What is the balance, and what do you see happening in our society? Are parents keeping sports in balance, or are we out of balance? How do you maintain that? How do you know when you need to spend more time with sports and not? It's, you know, I think that, again, is, is a tough one. Um, you know, working with FCA, we, we have um, leadership teams, and uh, we have summer interns. And uh, we found that a lot of times students that have been involved with sports uh, – they're aware of uh, discipline. They're aware of goals. They're aware of expectations. Sometimes that you wouldn't get if you were mm-hmm. not in sports. Uh, if you miss practice, you don't play. If you are late, you're going to have to go do sprints. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and so and then in my own family, uh, you know, I, I try to encourage our kids to be involved with the sport all the time. Um, there was several times where one of my sons weren't involved in a sport and it seems like they uh, struggled more in school, oddly enough, you know, when they had uh, get home at three and, and you got till you go to bed at 10, you've got seven hours as opposed to you get home at seven, you've got three hours to get this done. It's almost like there's a little bit more of an urgency, I think. Pressure. Yeah, Yeah, it was pressure. And, and I'm, I'm just saying that's what I've seen in my own life with my kids. The, the the my wife is Hispanic as you know yeah they have in Spanish they have a phrase the weight makes the donkey walk yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so the pressure sometimes causes you to move forward it, it does I mean and I've and I've seen that and I, you know but I do think that again going back to the word balance um I I I've seen this with three sons um when when you're young and you think oh you got to be a part of this this and this you got to go to this training you got to do this travel ball experience i think there's definitely a balance you have to find mm-hmm. because um i think it's around 12 or 13 there's a little thing called genetics that kicks in mm-hmm. and uh you know you can't do anything about size or speed, speed. you yeah. know you, you may get a little bit stronger but uh you know that you know that things happen when uh yeah what you got i i tried my best to get over <laughs> 5 foot 6 i know it i mean i i was like barney five hanging in a closet oh, trying to stretch myself it didn't work it, it it's and crazy I, always, I ran a 4940 and it just wouldn't i it mean wouldn't. i even tried it downhill and it oh, wouldn't yeah. do any better it just didn't happen yeah you know i heard the story too uh we we had charlie ward i don't know if you remember him he yeah. Heisman trophy winner he played 17 years in the nba he came and spoke at an fca event we were hosting but an interesting story about him is his father did not allow him to play organized sports until he started high school. Really? And he said two reasons why. One is he, my dad wanted me to really know the proper technique of how to shoot a basketball. He didn't want Little League to mess that up. Mm-hmm. You know, sh- you know, heave up those three-pointers at seven years old because you got the strength to do it, but you may not have the technique down. Yeah. He wanted him to learn how to shoot basketball in the driveway. He wanted him to learn how to throw football in the backyard with him t- properly. And then he didn't want the, uh, the experience to burn him out. Mm. And so can you imagine this Heisman Trophy, future Heisman Trophy candidate showing up for football tryouts 
where has this guy been? You know. Yeah, if you're if you're the starting quarterback and you're a senior and Charlie Ward shows up as a freshman, it's a bad day. It's a bad day because he was not in the. You didn't see him anywhere in the system. I, I didn't know this guy was coming. It was, it was like, did they have a transfer portal in the high school? I, I know. Gotta, I gotta get out of here. I yeah, he was something else. Yeah, and and his, and his dad was uh, also was a spiritual leader in his home, and he just you know that was their conviction. They didn't want to take all that time away. You know what? It, Charlie Ward, he's either going to have it or he's not going to have it. He's either going to have it in his genetic makeup mm-hmm. or he's not. So there's nothing that we can do that's going to change that. We can just, you know, we just want to help him. And yeah, yeah. I, I actually wrote about that in a, in, a, in a book is so many parents buy the lie. Right. Because somebody's going to whisper in their ear and say, he's got talent. Right, exactly. Why don't you sign him up for my camp? Exactly. And it, it it's either going to happen or not happen. I played with some great athletes, and I can tell you from experience, the talent is what got them into college. And There's no doubt about it. It was, I mean, you you got to work hard. I'm not saying that, that you don't. But if you don't have talent, just enjoy it. Enjoy I, it. I think sometimes parents, they, they buy lots of lies because sure. there's a lot of people making money off of Oh yeah, sports. And then yeah. they found out that they probably could have paid for college, uh, yeah. instead of investing in all those. Uh, yeah, for what they spent <laughs> yeah, on. No. Yeah, we're not going to go into that. Right, right, right. So, what do you see as uh, you work with a lot of kids? This fatherless generation—it's uh, an epidemic. We have right. 18.4 million kids that will go home tonight, and there won't be a daddy there. Right. What do you think that does to a kid psychologically, emotionally? in terms of just their whole outlook on life? I think it uh, definitely, I've seen it, you know, uh, yeah, we work with uh, student athletes and students, you know, all over the area. And then, you know, me being a father and seeing my own sons, how they respond to us, my wife and I, um, they're good kids, but, you know, I, I don't know if they would have passed school, with, you know, with without us mm-hmm. supporting them and, and pushing them and telling them, you know, Hold them accountable. Do you have your homework done? Mm-hmm. Did you finish that project? Um, are you uh, you going to go to bed so you can get up in the morning and be ready for school and have a fresh mind? Uh, I think it affects them in a major way. And I, I don't think anybody has an excuse, but I, I think, you know, when I look at it, it's like if any of these kids have an excuse, I mean, they've got it. Yeah. I mean, they, they you know, man, they don't have anybody supporting them or, or, or pushing them or holding them accountable. That's a practical side of things, but I think even bigger, you know, like I said, I'm unintentionally and trying to be intentionally, my I'm, my kids are, are following me. So they're able to see kind of how I respond to adversity, how I respond to pros- prosperous moments in life, how I respond to setbacks. They're witnessing that with, with, with their own eyes. And uh, I can't imagine a kid not being able to witness that, you know, uh, they're having to figure it out on their own. And uh, how do you deal with these circumstances? Well, you just got to – can I share one story? Sure. Uh won't mention the player's name, but I was at Jacksonville State and uh, had a player that had warnings, and he was a star player. He was going to be probably a preseason all-conference player for us. And um, he grew up in inner-city Atlanta from, in a fatherless home. And he was a phenomenal athlete. I mean, he was just a phenomenal athlete. But they gave him several chances, and they finally had to let him go. Starting player for us. And uh, he didn't want anything to do with me. Honestly, I represented the preacher role. Mm-hmm. And I, I walked through the locker room, hey, man, what's up? You know, I talked to Satan. And, he, and I could hear him kind of joking about me, you know. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, man, no preacher man over there. You know, just joking about yeah. I, I'm like, I'm all right. That's fine. You can joke about me. So we didn't really have any kind of relationship at all until he got kicked off the team. And I called him up. I said, hey, I, man, I just heard the news. Can I can I meet you for lunch? And he's like, sure. We met and talked, and I'm sitting right across the table from him at uh, Jefferson's there in Jacksonville and uh, started just talking. I said, just tell him I'm sorry, you know. Just want to let you know I'm here to support you any way I can. And And literally this tough kid, tears rolled down his face, I didn't ask these questions. He just said, nobody ever really taught me how to treat a woman. I was like, really? Uh, I didn't know where that was, you know, what, what that had to imply. I said, nobody really talked to me about what I want to do with my life. It's just been football. I'm over here in college, and I'm aimlessly 
going to class just so I can play football. And I don't have any kind of plan. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, he, and he just shared with me, you know, nobody talked to me about what I want to do with my life, what kind of major I want to have. This is a college. So he's 20 years old. Twenty, Yeah, he's probably 21 years old with tears in his eyes. And anyway, it, that to me opened my eyes. You know, uh, here's a kid that just didn't see, you know, any – example in front of him about you know going after something mm-hmm. other than football he didn't see a father that had to deal with maybe a layoff uh, mm-hmm. being let go from their job or having to start a business or uh having to provide for their family whatever it took to provide for their family and you, hey you just got to keep going yeah even if it gets tough you got to find another way he did, he, to us that seems so common right. sense but to a kid who's never had it modeled it's we forget that they there's so many that really haven't. Literally, they don't have a clue. They don't have a clue, and I and I'm like looking at him, and I'm thinking, you know what? If there's anybody's got an excuse to be in the position that you're in, I mean, you would have yeah. it, you know. So, what would you want your kids to say about you? Um. Well, a guy I worked with, uh, he's uh, Gary Kramer. He's a um, Alabama University, of Alabama FCA person there that works with football has three kids uh, that are that are great kids from what I understand uh he he was talking to them one night and and, and for some reason this tombstone thing came up you know what would you, what would my tombstone say you know and uh and and one of their kids said this and they all agreed they said my dad was the same with us as he was with you and I thought about that. He thought, man, man, what a great compliment. He said, you know, that I was not um, projecting something to the world that I wasn't. You know, they saw a guy who was authentic and that was real. Um, I, would want, I would want my kids to say that about me. I would want them to say that my dad was authentic and real, um, that my dad, uh, you know, loved them and cared for them, but that my dad – um, you know, who he was, was real, you know, um, particularly in ministry, you know, ministry career, um, you know, you, you can, you hear the stories yeah, and, and, you know, because you do, I mean, Hey, I, I, and there's people in ministry that just aren't real. Exactly. They're faking it. Right. And their kids know it. And then their kids know it. There's no hiding it from you. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> and I want my kids to know, and I, and I, that's for that reason. I try to be transparent with them and just say, "Hey, I, I, I messed up. Um, I missed it. I'm sorry the way I handled that situation. As you guys witnessed that, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have thought that. Uh, I shouldn't have voiced that to you. I, I'm so sorry. I, I, I apologize. Um, and I think that's the. The one thing that I think, uh, honestly, when I went to school for ministry, they, they really discouraged transparency, it seemed like. Yeah. You know, uh, they, were, they were teaching us how to go do interviews and, like, you know, hey, just put your best foot forward, you know, kind of put yeah. aside the weaknesses. and We have a very perceptive world. Right. <laughs> and they can see right through all that garbage. They can see right through it. And, yeah. and, and, I, and I really think it, it helps us uh, gain trust and credibility. Yeah. Particularly with their own family, uh, they, they they know to, their to dad. Be transparent, just being yeah. You uh, you said something to me. I know you don't remember it because it's been probably fifteen years ago, but I remember it very vividly, and I've shared it several times in sp- speaking engagements. You said that if you had a hypothetical situation where you could ask God to tell you the one hundred best Christians on the earth today. Right. You remember? Right. And he gave you a list. You wouldn't recognize anybody on the list. Exactly. That, I've, that's always stuck in my mind, Zane. <laughs> but, but you've kind of lived your life by that that motto, too. I know you have because you're you're very transparent. Here I am. I'm not perfect. Right. And here, here I am. You want to take a minute to – you had two dads. Right. You want to take a minute to just pay both of them honor and – Say what you like. You can look in that camera. Okay. If you want to. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Um, my my father first, uh, biological dad, um, Eddie Strange, um, taught me and teaches me today 
uh, about uh, humility and um, taking care of his family and, um, you know, being a, someone that's, that serves. And uh, I learned that from you, uh, Dad, and I thank you for that example. Thank you for uh, being there and caring for uh, my brother and I. And I uh, appreciate your uh, love and support. And uh, to Bill, uh, my stepfather, thank you for the opportunity to see um, God just change your life and uh, change your your way of thinking, uh, change who you are um, because of a heart change in you. Uh, it was amazing to see that happen and to see uh, how you have led and followed him uh for over 35 years now, I guess, uh, seeing that happen to me was uh, impactful. So both of you uh, have impacted my life in major ways, and I cannot thank you enough and love you both. Thank you, Jamie. All right. Got a little something for you as we close. Oh, man. Dad, thank you so much for everything you do. You're always there when we have a need and always supportive of any sport we do. And I really just can't thank you enough, and I love you so much, Dad. Hey, it's uh, Alex Strange here, son, middle son of the great Jamie Strange. And I'd say the thing I love most about my dad is how hardworking he is while still showing humility, love, and care for our family. And he's also a super funny guy. Could be a comedian in day-to-day -day life, but he's a great guy for sure. The thing I love most about my dad, I, I think about it in a sports analogy, what makes a good team great is when they have guys that know how to fill their role. And that's what I've noticed with my dad. You know, growing up, I was the oldest one. And so when, when I was young, he knew how to raise me. And now I'm 22 years old in a new phase of life. And he has the perfect advice for me now like he's done it before. Hi, I'm Rebecca Strange. And Jamie Strange is my husband. And God is my everything. But on this earth, he is my very best friend, Jamie Strange. And he is funny and humble and loving and kind. And most of all, he loves the Lord, and he loves us so wonderfully. So thank you, Jamie Strange, for all that you do. We love you more than you'll ever know. And thank you to God for one of life's greatest gifts that I could ever ask for. Oh, man. That's awesome. Thank you all so much. Golly. You want to comment on that? Man, it's uh, humbling to, to, to hear. Um, and I'm grateful, you know, uh, as, a, as, a, as a father I, I, uh, and as a husband. I feel blessed and privileged to have them, and uh, and um, one thing that I've shared with them is that they're not mine. Uh, I'd love to hold them as my own, but they're 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 God's, and He's allowed me the opportunity to just be a steward and help take care of them, and it's humbling uh, to have that. And uh, but they have been a uh, a blessing and I'm most grateful for them. And I know that, that outside of my relationship with the Lord, I mean, that's it. I mean, that, they're, they're everything to me. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Jamie, you're going to inspire somebody. We appreciate you. I oh, appreciate man. your friendship. I appreciate you. Yeah. We're kind of like-minded. I Definitely. think in a lot of ways, I wish we were closer in distance as, as far as travel time, but thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing it. Thanks for what you do with FCA. Thank you so Great much. organization. Thank you. That'll conclude this episode of That's My Dad, where we're inspiring fathers to be great dads, breaking cycles of generational fatherlessness. We'll be back next week with a great interview. Thanks.